No, as I explained to you before, muscles move bones. So as you see me move my bones in my hand, my fingers, my wrists, and so on, you can see all the different muscular contraction of different muscle groups in my forearm. So on our dominant side, are you right or you're lefty? Right. On your, on your dominant side, loosey-goosey, you're always going to have a certain pressure point that's going to be a little more tender here compared to if I go down the rest of the arm. If you take your finger and you feel that spot, it's about the size of a match head, that little crit of a sensitive mm -hmm. compared, to, compared to. That spot is representing over thousands of spots from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet of where nerves and blood vessels literally plug in. So that when you move your hand or move whatever you're talking about, it actually compresses that tissue, just like as you feel me compress here. And if it compresses long enough, it actually irritates the nerve and you'll say, ouch. At the same time, it's slowing the flow of blood within the tissue. Now, right now, the size of that area, that's normal. That's, that's not a problem. But let's say you and your dad have a big project. So all day long, your dad's got you out there with the scraper, scraping up all the paint off the garage door and inside, eight hours a day. Well, by the end of the week, you can imagine how bad your elbow's feeling. When you go back to touch that spot, examine that spot again, not only is it going to be much, much more tender, it's actually going to have grown in size because the tissue starts to lock itself up. That's when a pressure point becomes what they call an active pressure point, actively reproducing pain. And you have four types. You have active types, latent, satellite, and secondary. That's why you have all different parts of the body that are reacting to it. So when a person has a pain in one area, there may be points that are above and below above high, possibly on the opposite side, that are affecting the whole mechanism. That's why you have to do more spots than just where the pain aspect is at. So what we do is we use pressure that's comfortable for the patient. The pressure does two things. First, as I apply my pressure, it's first and foremost stimulating the nerve. My goal is just to stimulate just enough to stimulate, but not to overly irritate. That's why you and I are working together to figure out what's a good pressure for you today. And as you get better, you will naturally be able to tolerate a firmer pressure as we go along with this. The second thing that's happening as I'm holding the pressure, I'm slowing the blood supply through an area that's already kind of starving for circulation. And what occurs is all kinds of metabolic byproducts. It's like a white milky fluid that builds up in that trapped area. And as that spot gets larger, we have more and more of that stuff there. I mean, there's all $25 words, bradycon, hyaluronic acid, substance P, prostaglandins, hydrogen ion content. There's all kinds of stuff that's there that's irritating the nerve to continue to have you say, ouch, and feel uncomfortable. I'm putting pressure on that area, slowing the fl flow of blood even more so that when I let go, two things happen. The nerve actually starts to feel less sensation, which is driving the whole pain pattern in the first place as well as the muscular contraction. And at the same time, for a very short period of time, it could be milliseconds, it could be minutes, and sometimes hours, the blood vessels literally open up to kind of flush the area to move some of that chemical stuff out of there. That's what distinguishes pressure point work from massage therapy. Pressure point work is very localized and very specific. Massage therapy is more of a general kind of getting the whole uh, musculature for circulation of lymphatic. The problem is that you don't want to overly stimulate the area because you can excite the area when we're trying to calm it down. I have no control of how much stuff is going to be liberated when I let go. You have no control of how fast your body reabsorbs that. That's why sometimes the point can be a little sensitive. Everything is done to the patient's tolerance. Uh, and, and as the patient gets used, used to the procedure, then we can always use a little bit more pressure and we start to add more areas to the body to break the pain pattern on that patient. And it doesn't make a difference if the pain is from a nerve root irritation from a disc. There's where the spinal decompression would be added into it. It doesn't make any difference if it is a joint problem because muscles move the joints, the joints through the muscles. Or it may be a pure muscle problem, and this would be part of the package anyway. So muscle, muscle joint, muscle joint disc, it does not make any difference. We always start out with the musculature and add secondary and tertiary approaches to it. Exercise is going to be important also at the right time. If you're in pain, it makes no sense to me to try to exercise pain out. It makes more sense to me to quiet it down, and as the pain diminishes, then you supplement and add to it some gentle stretching and then ultimately toning, and then, of course, you're weeding the patient off the active treatment because they're doing things to help themselves at home.